I've got a quote here uh, from you, Hugo, that I want to read that I, I came across in my research. And you said, we already have the largest network of complete nodes ever assembled. Running a full node on Minima is as effortless as running a messaging app on your mobile. Using Minima, developers can build decentralized apps on a mobile with an addressable market of 2.5 billion users and no middlemen, miners, stakers, or block producers. Shout out. This is incredible what you built. Let's just talk for a second, though. Like, I think it's so unbelievable, almost. I think any of our listeners might be like, well, but why aren't other chains doing this? Why is this... How is it all of a sudden possible to run a full node on a mobile phone that's as easy as running a messaging app? As you said, Hugo, to most of us, you know, we say, oh, let's go proof of stake. Let's provide some security to the node. Let's be a node runner. And then you look up what it requires to do that. You need the amount of hardware you need, a computer science degree. Like most people are like, oh, I can't, which led to, you know, all of these other platforms that will do it for you. Yeah. Again, without getting so technical, I don't want to get yeah, too yeah. technical. Yeah, I mean, I'll mention that. Possible? Well, I, mean, I can let Paddy go a bit technical on it, but I think just to sort of... Hugo's the non-tech. I'm the non-tech. Sorry, the non-tech. I'm the non-tech. So it's good to get yeah, yeah, his... Yeah, I'm the tech. Yeah, no, it's I mean, I mean, I think as much as anything else, it was it was really two things that came together. Firstly, Bitcoin, Bitcoin was you know came into being sort of 2008, basically. But at that time, the iPhone had literally just arrived. So it wasn't ever mm-hmm. thought of the fact that actually an iPhone could ever, or any phone could, or smartphone could be used to do that kind of computation. So that was the first thing, that the technology wasn't there yet. And the second thing, obviously, and as Paddy said, building on the shoulders of giants, you know, lots of learnings have been made in blockchain over the last decade. And so if you if you bring together the sort of the advancements in technology and shrinking everything down, plus also understanding how blockchains work and where the benefits of a blockchain can be used and where things certain things can be stripped back, you know, the size of the ledger is, you know, the key to a blockchain. However, you're not going to put gigabytes of data on a phone. You're not going to put terabytes of data if you're talking like Ethereum onto the phone. So actually, how do you actually strip that back down? So I guess what, what Paddy's done is, is looked at ways to actually create a very lean and compact blockchain that works with a phone. I mean, we could spend another hour going into the details of how that is. Basically, you can go to our website and look up um, our docs minimum.global you go to our docs and it explains it's all there basically that's how we've done it we look to sort of take the best bits of blockchain and sort of cram it all into a, a device that everybody has because if you want it to be truly centralized it needs to be something that is accessible to everybody and i think you know we not only do we run on phones but we also run on raspberry Pis, and the end game is to run on chip so effectively this is not just about mobile phones this is about all connected devices an effect which is running minima in the background creating that sort of value transfer layer for secure sort of value transfer inter- interactions and communication layer because if if i could just just quickly for instance the ledger thing yeah everyone's like how are you, how are you going to squeeze a blockchain database onto a phone yeah very normal question we all know blockchain databases are big yeah i need 500 gigabytes for bitcoin i need 10 terabytes for ethereum i need this this, this is going to work all right well what if we flip this yeah, And what if in our cooperative model, we say, well, look, I don't actually need to look after Hugo's coins and he doesn't need to look after my coins. What I need to do is I need to look after my coins and Hugo can look after his coins. And then when he wants to send a transaction, yeah, we have what's known as a, a Merkle tree. It's a mathematical thing. And when I send a transaction, I can actually add a mathematical proof to the validity and existence of my coins. And just that simple concept, which was actually, you know, Peter Todd came up with that on, on Bitcoin Talk, just the most wonderful forum ever for any of us who were, who were on there. And it's called a proof database. And so what that means is that we actually now use a database on Minima where everybody looks after their own coins. Yeah, so I look after my coins. You would look after yours, Jay. And then when you set a transaction, you give a proof. It's a mathematical proof. It's called a Merkle branch, which shows the that. And everybody goes, oh, yeah, OK, that, that, that coin does actually exist. And what's really nice about this is that it's a lossless system. So we have as much data as a normal database. But instead of every... So normally when you send a transaction on Bitcoin, all the miners have got a really big book. And they look in the book and they go, does Paddy have those? Yes, he's got those coins. Okay, this transaction is valid. But if I added the proof myself of the existence of those coins to the transaction, they don't need the big book. And they can go, oh, look, this math thing. Yeah, that works. Okay, fine. That must be a valid transaction. And so just in that simple way, we've managed to squeeze 
a virtually limitless size of a database because yeah, these things grow logarithmically so they grow fast at the beginning and then slow and then they never get any bigger and everybody can now look after their own coins and that squeezes down onto your phone and so that's like okay that's one of the things we we've managed to do there's other things obviously that you have to do you have to think well you know as hugo was saying when bitcoin came out phones just weren't as powerful now my phone is more powerful than my laptop was three years ago i've mm-hmm. literally got you know a computer you know a proper computer in my pocket which can do anything, you know, frankly, your phone is, I mean, soon we won't have laptops, you know, you'll just be logging into screens onto your phone. That's the sort of power we're talking about. And so then it sort of makes sense. And you think, well, yeah, obviously I can do, you know, a few, because that's not the bottleneck. Yeah. When you're thinking about blockchains, that all those big computers, this is the other interesting thing that when you see massive racks of servers and everything and all of this stuff, that's not the processing of the transactions. That's the mining that's the work that they're doing. That's all of that stuff. Yeah. And it's like, we've got rid of that as well because we don't have massive server farms. Yeah. Everybody does a tiny little bit of work. And yeah, whenever you said, and we call it transactional power, TX power. And whenever you want to do a transaction, whether on chain or off chain, whether on layer one, or layer two, you have to do a little bit of work. Otherwise, the message isn't forwarded across the network. And this is why you have to do the little bit of work to utilize the network. And when we use other clever maths and we stick all of those little pieces of work together, and that adds up to a really rather nice big piece of work. So suddenly it's like, right, you don't need the big computers. We don't need the big, you know, the big hardware you know, database. And so all of these things add up and suddenly you've got a, a blockchain running on a phone, which is very nice.